Hello YouTube, this is God of Radio Moscow here again with another beer review. I have something a bit more random to do for this one. This is the Obolon Premium which comes to you from Kiev in Ukraine. Ukraine's a country I've been interested in visiting for a little while. Obviously there was the European football tournament was co-hosted by Ukraine recently and on the TV we got to see a lot of the uh, the different cities. Lviv particularly in the, in the west caught my eyes being very beautiful but uh, Kiev is also supposed to be a really really nice place to visit but hopefully if they join the European Union at some stage soon I can get out there and take a look and try some a lot of the different beers but anyway without further ado I'll take you through the history of the Obolon breweries I usually like to do in my videos now uh, this the the Obolon uh, story according to the website starts in 1974 and this was when the site where the Obolon brewery in Kiev now stands was filled in and was sand filled in preparation for construction now, the construction itself began in 1980 and the site was selected and designed by Czech engineers and it was basically near an artesian well in Kiev's Obolon district now the main idea behind the selection of this site was the quality of the water which it provided and this water source comes through a Jurassic bedrock with 290 meters of depth now, when the production started in 1980, uh, they dedicated this to the 22nd Olympic Games, and the brewery was originally called Kiev Brewery Number no. Three, and only acquired the Obolon name in 1986. The Obolon, uh, the word Obolon, refers to the low riverside meadows that you find in Kiev, but the foundation of the Obolon also included Kiev Breweries One and Two, and also the Fastiv Brewery. But in 1989, the staff elected Alexander Slobodoyan out of five candidates who were nominated to take the position of chief. Chief Executive Officer of the Obolon Brewery and he's apparently also been involved uh, extensively in Ukrainian politics for a number of years. Now in 1992 Obolon made history by becoming the first privatised company in Ukraine since the fall of communism and in 1993 they became a joint closed company. And the company apparently also provided the, the basis in Eastern Europe for the low alcohol beverage market with the release of their gin and tonic. Uh, in 1996, the company also took part ownership in two breweries, the Sevastopol Brewery and the Bershad Integrated Brewery, and a year later they also took ownership of the Oktyrka Brewery, I'm not sure about the production of that one, a year, they took a control of that a year later in 1997, when they also started to produce the first canned beers that came off the production line in Ukraine. Now in 1999, they start, the Naya Obolon Scientific and Production Association was established in Kemernivtsi, I apologise from a pronunciation again uh, in the Kemelnitsky region and uh, from which then on is involved in selective work, breeding, testing, commercial propagation of seeds, uh, promising, bar promising barley varieties and it uh, provides Obolon basically with their, their high quality ingredients that they're used to. Now in 2003 the Obolon brand became recognised as a golden trademark and in 2004 they invested 18 million dollars in upgrading the brewery and this included the introduction of Europe's largest bottling line with a capacity of 110,000 bottles per hour and the setup of the new equipment was overseen by the Siemens and KHS companies from Germany so the Germans have taken a bit of an involvement in the, the setting up of this brewery so it's going, to be, it's going to be a fairly high quality brewery. Now in 2007 football player Andrei Shevchenko who you'll no doubt have heard of he's a very very famous probably the most famous Ukrainian football player around uh, but he's actually retired recently but uh, Andrei Shevchenko and Obolon initiated a charitable football match under the motto give your heart to children and the funds raised for this have been directed to the construction of a children's clinic of the future and uh, there's been several charitable projects between Andrei Shevchenko Foundation and the Obolon Brewery and the company incidentally on the subject of football has also been the main sponsor of Obolon Kiev in the Ukrainian league since 1999 now in 2009 they opened a malting plant and this is in the Kemeritsky uh, region. I'm sorry again about the, pr the pronunciation of these things. Some of the, Europe the Eastern European pronunciations are a bit crazy for uh, an English speaker. But it's one of the most up-to-date uh, malting facilities in Europe and the total project investment in this was apparently a hundred million dollars and their production capacity is 120,000 tonnes of malt per year. But this year they also, st in the year 2009, they also introduced the production of the Zibbert range of beers and a year later in 2010 the brewery celebrated their 30th anniversary and the company now have eight different brewing facilities throughout Ukraine and they export their products to over 30 different countries and they apparently account for 80% of all Ukrainian beer exports and apparently the, the, uh, the majority of these go to Russia but I think they're coming more into the west of Europe now. 
But uh, in addition to the Obelon Premium that I have here, under the Obelon name, the company also produced Soborna, which is a German uh, Pilsner. Uh, Oxamitova, I'm not sure about the, production, the pronunciation there again, sorry, but that's a dark lager. Strong, which is obviously a strong lager, and live. Now this one's quite interesting because apparently it's an unfiltered beer and only has a short shelf life of 45 days due to the, I think, the presence of all the, the stuff that, I think, what did they say it wasn't? I'm sure it said on the website that it was non-pasteurised and this was why it has such a short shelf life. But they also have a, a non-alcoholic and a light variety and they're responsible, as I said earlier, for the uh, production of the Zibber beer brand as well as having several beer mixes with various fruits and I think they just call these Obelon Mix. But anyway, without further ado, let's get on to the tasting. I'll just let you have a little look at the... Uh, at the, the bottle cap and things like this for this one. I'm, I'm not sure if this is the, the city crest of Ukraine or on the, of the crest of the Obolon district of uh, of Kiev rather on this bottle. It looks it's quite an interesting little crest. The Eastern European countries actually have some really really beautiful crests in their uh, in, in all their cities and things like that. They, as you remember I did the uh, the Polish beer Lech recently and it had the uh, the city crest of Potsdam on it for those of you interested in the bottle caps. I'll just check the camera is actually focusing on these recently. I'm not sure how well you can see that but that it basically has the same crest on the bottle cap as you see here and you can see the sort of uh, Ukrainian letters on this here. The Russian alphabet I'm sure uh, I'm not sure if the Ukrainian alphabet is the same as the Russian alphabet but you get I think it's 38 characters in it so it's a bit it's for an English speaker it's obviously quite a random thing to see but uh, yeah this is apparently a 5.0% uh, European pale lager I'm sure this is just this is a mass produced beer but um, let's get this guy out and give it a taste I'm quite excited I've had this one for sitting for quite a while and I'm quite excited to actually have a try off and see what it's like just preserve the bottle cap as I usually do with my things for my collection. Oh, this is fizzing up. It's just gone a bit mental there. Okay. But let's get this guy out and see what he's like. As you can see, it's a very, very kind of pale straw colour. Let's see if we can get a bit more of a head on this guy. Okay, there we go. It's just a little bit left in the bottle there. Now as you can see it's fairly, it's a very very pale straw colour, there's a lot of kind of carbonation visible in that, it's got a kind of mixture between a sort of a uh, porous fluffy head, a lot of kind of bigger bubbles in there but it's also some small very fluffy ones in there. In terms of the aroma, it's actually got a very very weak aroma I have to say. In terms of the aroma kind of, there's maybe a little bit of malty sweetness in there, there's a bit of maybe apples too I would say but some slight uh, breadiness and some grassiness there's really th this actually has a very very weak nose to it I have to say it's a bit um, there really isn't very much to the nose of this beer at all mm. but anyway without further ado let's give it a taste and see what it's like hopefully the taste is a bit is a bit more than the nose hmm it's quite unusual I have to say this one It's quite, um, the first thing that comes is that it's quite lightly bready, I would say. There's a good bit of a uh, kind of hoppy bitterness in it, I would say. It's quite, uh, it's quite unusual. Like, I do, I have to admit, the first impression of this beer is that I actually quite like it. But yeah, it's quite, it's lightly bready. There's a chunk of, um, uh, kind of hoppy bitterness in there and you get some of the sweetness from the corn but it's got quite the finish to it is quite dry and quite bitter the mouth feel it's actually quite um it's a very very light beer to be honest it's actually got a really really wet mouth feel to it and it's really it's a lot more highly carbonated than the uh, appearance would let would let you believe. It's quite quite. It's actually gonna be quite zippy on the tongue. I would say. But very light bodied with a very kind of um, a very kind of car a very zingy carbonation on the tongue. I would say it's a very very wet mouth feel. I, I would say as well. It's a really it's a really unusual taste in a. Uh, mass produced beer I would say. My first impression of this beer is that I actually quite like it. So obviously it's not the, the um, 
the most exciting beer I've had, but I do actually quite like this one. This is a good beer, you know, for, for uh, I can see a lot of people when they went to the European tournament enjoying this one quite a bit. This is a really good just kind of casual drinking beer, I would say. In terms of the, the, the style, you know, being a kind of mass-produced uh, mass produced European pale lager, it's actually fairly decent within the style itself. As I say, it's not the most kind of exciting beer, it's not a craft beer, it's an industrial beer, so you're not going to get some of the really, really random flavours that you'll get with some of the, the really kind of cool craft beers that you can find. But this is a really, really good drinking beer. I mean, I can see myself being out in, you know, Kiev or Lviv or something like that and enjoying uh, enjoying a few bottles of these. It's actually quite nice, I have to say. Uh, but like I said, it's got a fairly weak nose to it. Um, but it's got a little bit of that corny taste that you kind of expect from Eastern European beers. It's a little bit bready, very kind of wet mouthfeel, very kind of light bodied. It's good that you can, it's a beer that you can just quite easily enjoy with a meal or something like that. If you ever get the chance to try it, I would say give it a go, see what you think. Beer's subjective. I mean, you might find uh, some different tastes in this beer than I have, or you might enjoy it more and really love it or whatever, but this is an interesting beer, I have to say. My first beer from uh, Ukraine, and I'll definitely be back to try a few more of the, the different Obelon beers that I mentioned earlier on when I was talking about the history of the brewery. But anyway, thanks again for watching my uh, beer reviews. I'll be back soon. I'm not quite sure what my next one will be at the moment, but I'll be back soon with another one. Uh, please let me know if you've had this beer before. Let me know your own thoughts on it in the comments, and like, subscribe, share the videos. Uh, Ukrainians, of course, please let me know some uh, different Ukrainian beers if there's some really, uh, really random good ones within your country. We don't actually get very many uh, Ukrainian beers. It's quite difficult to get any of these in, in Scotland, of course. So please let me know if you're watching about these different beers. But I'll catch you soon. Cheers.